Hello everybody, Infernape Shinjo here, here to tackle the Kalos anime. Now this one's a bit interesting because this was the time that I started watching the dub and the sub. Because like the Japanese was so much further ahead that I just started watching that instead. But really a lot of the stuff that I bring up doesn't really apply to dub or sub. But let's get started. So, the Kalos anime, the one where Ash is actually a competent trainer and still loses the league. All jokes aside, I actually do have a couple of pros to bring up about this part of the show, so let's start. Ash, for starters, actually has a pretty solid team. He's got two dragon types, which is a first for him because the only other dragon that he had was Gibble, and Gibble didn't really do anything. But he had two powerful dragons and a special Greninja. I'll get to that point later. So it was pretty interesting and his team was actually stacked this time. The other thing that I like and it basically goes overall with everything else that I'm discussing. His traveling companions. Clement, Serena and Bonnie all get good development in this series. And it's really cool to see. Like Serena... Obviously, she cut her hair, and she actually develops as a character. Clement, he leaves the group to prepare for the gym battle, and that's so weird because it's one of those things where it never happened before, and it proved that this gym battle is actually serious. And also, Bonnie is a better kid character than Max in every way, and her whole dynamic with Squishy really just trumps over everything that Max ever did. Plus, Bonnie's actually a fun character to watch. But with all that, we gotta have cons. And, oh boy, I don't know if I'm gonna make people really heated about this one, but I'm going for it anyway. So I'll start with the stuff that actually involves the anime to begin, and it just boils down to Ash Greninja. Now I mentioned that he had a special Greninja with Bon Phenomenon, but that's all well and good, but Ash Greninja just becomes his ace in the hole for any battle that they do after they master it. And that's so rough to see because that means that Ash's other Pokemon, even Pikachu, get shafted in battles. It just seems like after Ash Greninja is finally mastered, it just boils down to well, I need the battle. Go, Ash Ninja. Like, even Noivern didn't get any wins in the series, as far as I can remember. Gudra basically drew every battle that it was in. Halucha, he didn't even do jack in the league. He lost to a slacking and beat a Mega Absol, but we didn't even see the whole battle. Now, Pikachu did take down two pseudos on our launch team, I will give him that. But... It just always boiled down to, okay Ash, you gotta win, send out that Ash Greninja. But overall, the series itself wasn't bad. There was some filler that really wasn't needed, and a lot of stuff that wasn't really developed, like the Malamar subplot. But overall, it wasn't bad. But, that's not all the cons. While I wouldn't normally bring up Pokemon fans in videos like this, I feel like this video is one where I have to bring it up because it's unavoidable. And if you don't want to watch through the rest of this video, even though it's not going to be long anyway, just know that it all just boils down to one word, toxic. Because I remember when the anime was airing new episodes, everybody that I saw was talking about like, oh, Serena's crush on Ash. And I've made a point before that I didn't really like Raftalia much in Shield Hero because a lot of her character just boils down to her crush on Naofumi and it doesn't really give her much of a personality. Now Raftalia does get development when they go back to visit her village but regardless, a lot of Serena's personality at the start just boils down to there's that kid, I want to see Ash and she's basically just a lovesick puppy. Now after she cuts her hair, she actually gets away from liking Ash a little bit, but a lot of episodes still boil down to she likes Ash, and it's weird because like in other series, 
they don't do this. Like, Misty and, like, the Pokemon Christmas CD that they did that was dub only mentions Misty's crush on Ash. May, Dawn, and Iris. They don't really reference it at all. To be fair, it's not really that well established. But it is super clear that Serena has a crush on Ash. And it just makes people super toxic, in my opinion. Especially after Serena leaves. Because even after this Kalos series ended, and even to this day, I still see people say, bring back Serena for Alola, bring back Serena for Journeys. And I'm just like, dude, I get that you like Serena, but this is just becoming a little bit ridiculous. And to tie into the Serena note, the League. The League. People were just gung-ho that Ash was going to win the League. Like, okay, he's got an unbeatable Greninja. He's got a type advantage to a launch Charizard. But he still loses, and somehow, people are still surprised. Although at the same time, I'm not really sure why people are too surprised, because from Kalos, Unova, Hoenn, Johto, and Kanto, it was never established that Ash had any sort of chance winning a league. Now, of course, Alola went and proved us wrong, but regardless, after I watch Ash actually lose the league, I'm just like, okay, Ash lost the league and went on with my life. But other people just don't let it go. Now, I'm not really pointing any fingers with any of this stuff, but the best way that I can explain it is Pokemon takes up a part of my life but not my whole life. It doesn't really ruin my day if Serena's crush on Ash doesn't come to fruition. It doesn't ruin my day if Serena ever comes back. It doesn't ruin my day if Ash loses the league. But then you got those toxic people that just feel the need to bring up, oh, Ash lost the league. It's honestly as toxic as the bring back national decks thing. Because I don't really care what they do, because at the same time, it doesn't really matter, because I have no control over whether I want this to happen or that to happen, and I have a life outside of Pokemon. Again, I'm not pointing any fingers, but I just can't fully say I love the Kalos anime, because when I think of the Kalos anime, I just think of the toxic fans that want Serena to come back and Ash to win a league. And then when he does win a league in Alola, people say, oh, it doesn't count. I don't know, that's my rant on the Kalos anime. Overall, I would say that it's a good series, but the toxic fandom kind of ruins it. I don't want to say it fully ruins it, because there are other good moments in this show, regardless of that. Like Serena cutting her hair, even out of context, is still a powerful scene. And Bonnie singing to Squishy while she's crying. And even... Clement blowing up his robot, even though it comes back anyway, it's still a powerful scene. But it's just one of those things that the toxic fandom would make outsiders not even want to watch it. I'm not as educated on it, but it really reminds me of the whole Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce thing, where people in real life really rioted because there's not this special sauce at McDonald's. It honestly just feels childish to me. But those are my thoughts on the Kalos anime. And this is really the only time that I'll bring up the fan base in any of these videos because this one is just like super toxic in my opinion. Not to the level of the National Dex thing because that's still going on. The Kalos anime already ended. But I do appreciate them making Ash a more competent battler. But it really made a lot of his other mons besides Greninja just get shafted. But let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you have any harassments, please don't post them because I don't care anyway. But join me next time where I round up this with the Alola anime. Momentai.